who are candidates for PRP, whether it's a patient who elected to delay childbearing until, until later um, in life and to prioritize other things, right? And, um, and now struggling with um, fertility because of now the aging effect on the quality of the eggs, poorer ovarian reserve, poor response to IVF and uh, not being able to create good quality embryos that are uh, suitable for clinical pregnancy. Um, patients who have premature ovarian insufficiency, you know, patients for whatever reason um, have been struggling and have done multiple IVF cycles with poor outcome. Those are patients who could be candidate for PRP. Um, they should absolutely seek recommendation on whether or not PRP could be an adjunct to their treatment option. PRP is safe and uh, for most patients it's effective. There is no risk of infection. It's your own blood. The technique is very simple. It's kind of like egg retrieval in reverse. So there's minimal downside to doing PRP and there can be uh, that, that additional treatment that could uh, lead to success and um, positive outcome. The idea is we inject the PRP directly into the ovaries. It is an uncomfortable procedure, so we kind of recommend that patients be asleep for the procedure. Technically, it is not challenging. The um, needle will go into the ovaries and we'll try to kind of infuse the platelets that are activated into the different parts of the ovaries so that we can embed it with the PRP. The benefit will start showing within four to six weeks. It peaks around month two or three, and it's a transient benefit. So it lasts on average about six months or so. So within those um, you know, two to six months after treatment, we really want to kind of be proactive in um, attempting to you know, stimulate, retrieve eggs, create embryos. The hope is that there is increased number of follicles that are now participating into in the process of follicular genesis because of the um, restoration of the um, ovarian environment. And so quality of eggs will, could be improved and the quantity, the number of eggs that is now retrievable should be higher than prior to PRP. PRP timeline, ideally for patients who are menstruating regularly, who have regular periods, we would like to time it around, um, you know, day two to four of their cycle. The reason is even that initial cycle where we inject the PRP, there have been report and we've had patients who actually naturally got pregnant. Um, so we don't want to miss out on any potential for PRP. So ideally, uh, we'll get it done in the follicular phase the first few days of the cycle. Again, based on the research and the papers and experience, the, the benefit will start peaking around month two to three after PRP injection. So the idea is those are the month that we're gonna start kind of assessing baseline, making sure to see some benefit, um, then pursue the cycle. If, you know, obviously we have more follicles, the, the hormonal profile of, is better. If not, we can actually skip month two, for example, and, you know, wait to see maybe month three will be better. But those are the month where we need the patient to be as proactive as possible, because if there will be benefit, these are the month where we're supposed to kind of engage patients and start treatment. So the bottom line is ovarian function can be restored. Um, ovarian environment can be enhanced so that the response to um, the IVF protocol uh, can be improved, whether it's better quality eggs or a higher number of eggs that would lead to statistically higher chance of success per cycle. A PRP can be beneficial to patient. Um, it's just a matter of finding out if this is the right treatment uh, for you as a patient.